this title competes for uh, very successfully, I would say, for the longest one at this conference, and I hope that I can keep my presentation much shorter. Uh, uh, simply, uh, I'm going to speak about, uh, you know, a uh, uh, pilot test that Shell performed uh, at their training testing facility at Muscle River Mine, not on NSD, uh, but on uh, thick containers. Uh, I won't uh, spend too much time on, on the outline, it's, it's as usual, a little bit more information on tailings testing facility, uh, the tests performed there, then uh, we are going to speak about results, uh, several questions that uh, we think are important for uh, the design and uh, uh, tailings planning. So. Uh, about uh, TTF, uh, the former name of TTF or Tailings Testing Facility was uh, uh, NST plant and it was built uh, at Shell's Muscat River Mine, uh, commissioned in 2007 and operated until 2010. It was actually one uh, big tailings factor. It consisted of uh, a thickener. Uh, with uh, a pertinent uh, infrastructure. It was a big uh, paste thickener, 10 meters uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, tall, and it was able to produce uh, a really uh, you know, uh, highly intensified uh, things. So uh, the focus of uh, work was on, uh, as I said, NST and things uh, thickening. This idyllic picture is actually not what was really happening there. So uh, this is uh, more uh, down to the earth. Uh, we had, the, uh, I'm going to speak about uh, two cells uh, uh, that were filled with uh, thickened material. Uh, the cells were uh, pretty big, uh, 50 by 20 meters uh, elongated shape uh, to allow a little flow. Uh, about uh, six meters deep, deep and uh, actually one large flume, wide flume, 90 meters long, 50 meters uh, wide. Uh, well, you see, now uh, it seems that uh, deep deposits are not in fashion for quite a number of years and uh, uh, for a large paddock which was actually relying on, on free stall, I see only Dr. Sigo who is going to uh, you know, give some support. So uh, maybe, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, what we can do now is to wrap up you know, the information on uh, this uh, project and put it somewhere in the storage for, uh, to wait for better times, which uh, are going to come, hopefully. So <clears throat> I'm going to just uh, quickly say what uh, uh, we did there. We instrumented those uh, cells. Uh, we had uh, in, in those big cells with two graduated uh, posts for measurement of settlement, uh, then measurement of uh, pore pressure profiles and uh, total stress at the, at the bottom on uh, one of the posts. And in, in a large paddock, we actually had uh, just uh, you know measurement of uh, settlement or things uh, thickness, and some thermistor strings for uh, temperature, which were actually not needed at all, because the whole thing was frozen like uh, one big brick. Uh, here you have some uh, data on, on the position history. Uh, so uh, first about uh, two two uh, deep cells. In the first one, uh, a material called uh, treated thickened tailings was uh, deposited. It was actually a paste uh, thickener underflow uh, with the gypsum and anionic flocculant added before the thickener, and it was deposited uh, using Tremi diffuser, which uh, actually reduced uh, the uh, energy and, and uh, made uh, that uh, environment uh, less uh, disruptive for the tailings uh, structure. Uh, cell 4 was used to uh, deposit uh, so-called uh, check pine mine TT analog material, uh, which, uh, as you can see, was actually not controlled. Uh, so density and SFR as were as they were, you know, uh, whatever came down the pipe was uh, processed. There was no physiotion. Uh, the position uh, was continued during uh, thickener upsets, and uh, you had only uh, photon treatment before the, the thickening. Also, uh, to make things worse, you had the open pipe to share, so a uh, high shear energy uh, deposition around. And the deposition was, as you can see, uh, you know, in uh, the winter time, 
for some reason Shell preferred to do it uh, at that time. Uh, the team that worked there didn't quite like it, but uh, you cannot choose. Now we have uh, here some information on uh, the material that was uh, uh, deposited there, and you can see that the difference is actually in uh, between the two materials, TTT and uh, Jack and mine TT analog is in uh, the solids content, which was significantly higher for uh, thickened material, TTT based, 60% versus 40 for uh, Jack and mine TT, and uh, a little less fines in in TTT, and of course uh, higher uh, weight ratio. Other limits pretty close, uh, which. Uh, I think Heather would like because it seems that uh, we don't have so good resolution as uh, with uh, her methods. And uh, in large product, we had a little larger variation uh, of uh, those parameters than, than in uh, Jack and Mine in, in cell 4. Uh, geotechnical characterization of the deposits uh, consisted, con consisted of uh, piston sampling with continuous profiling. Uh, laboratory testing on, on extracted core and strength testing using field methods. Uh, in, in those uh, large cells, we had three fixed locations to be able to compare the data. In large paddock, uh, well, it was, uh, I think, what, six locations uh, along the, uh, uh, the paddock, the cell. And uh, I just want to uh, pay your attention to, to the fact that we decided, you know, a, a number of uh, uh, characterization runs that we did. To pay attention to, uh, you know, uh, two characterizations performed uh, at one year after the position. AD is not anno domini, it's after the position. I apologize for you know, using that. Uh, so uh, uh, pay attention to cell one, cell four, one and five years or three years uh, after the position. So now uh, something about results, something that is uh, often use, used by uh, tennis planners in, in design. In cell one, in, in uh, initially thicker material, we had uh, larger slopes, uh, about one to two percent during the position, and they were reduced to, to well, very, very small 0.02 percent uh, after the position by some kind of a creep movement. In cell four, uh, the, the tailing surface was almost horizontal all the time. The material was really, really, in my opinion, uh, thin. Uh, the same material that was deposited in the large paddock showed some kind of, uh, uh, well, slope that was probably the effect of, uh, you know, proximity of uh, bottom boundary and, and relatively uh, shallow material. I mean, the thickness was, I think, uh, between uh, 1.2 meters upstream and, and uh, 0. 8 downstream or so. So based on, on uh, our experience, uh, I think that we can expect in commercial production even even smaller and gentler slopes uh, in uh, in materials uh, you know deposited in cells one and four. Now a little bit about uh, segregation. Uh, well, from those plots, uh, you have cell one and, and, and cell four in parallel. You have uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the data on uh, composition, bitumen and solids content on the left, and on the right you have fines content uh, on the basis of 44 microns. And you can see that, uh, well, in cell one, uh, that, that is not so much pronounced. And yet, you have some kind of, I would say, segregation, but, uh, and it, it is visible in, in the fines content plot, but not, not so much, not so convincing. Having in mind, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, margin of error that you can make, uh, you know, in uh, this testing. And uh, by the way, if, if you look at, at the bitumen content, with, which significantly changes in the uh, top one meter of the surface, uh, the red profile is actually upstream. So it was not, it was not segregation. Uh, you know, uh, it's actually, I, I believe, uh, you know, the variation is in uh, the quality of uh, uh, discharge. Uh, in cell four, what uh, you should pay attention to is, uh, okay. is you see uh, the difference between uh, you know those uh, three profiles, which are distinctly different. I mean, you have uh, about uh, five percent of, uh, of uh, difference in salt content between upstream and, and middle and downstream, and it tells you that uh, you have a kind of combination of segregation uh, due to flow 
and uh, in vertical direction due to, uh, I would say, uh, segregating sand in uh, quiescent conditions, something that you often see in, uh, in uh, thinner materials in, in, say, river deltas or so. Uh, now, something different uh, happened with uh, a shallow deposit of the same Jack Pine 9 TT material compared to, to cell 4. Uh, and you can see that we have a steady increase in uh, you know, uh, uh, fines content and, and, and clay content. And that tells us that uh, you have a, a different pattern of uh, segregation. Something happens uh, during, during flow. And it's not the same what was happening in, in, uh, in cell four. It is, I, I saw these profiles uh, before in, uh, you know, the, uh, say, uh, ETF beaches. It is something that, that was, I, I think, uh, kind of a, of a pattern of a rule. <coughs> Uh, by the way, sorry, uh, th this method DDH is, is the same. It's hydrometry that you perform on bituminous material without removing uh, you know, bitumen, and uh, you disperse that material. So it's, uh, it's kind of uh, C hydrometry. Now, if you go to uh, consolidation data, you can see that uh, uh, you have a pretty uh, nice uh, you know, uh, collection of, uh, of data. And uh, what I would uh, opt was, uh, would be to measure excess pore pressures or pore pressures, not settlements, because they are more sensitive and give you a better idea about uh, you know, the uh, process of consolidation here there. Especially if you can install or, or in any other way uh, infer something about uh, the magnitude of, of uh, total stress, you can determine uh, effective stress. In that case, uh, you will be able to uh, cancel some effects like precipitation or uh, snow uh, melting that affect both total stress and effective stress. Uh, well, this is something that I would like to spend uh, more, much, much more time, but uh, of course I cannot. It is published in uh, one paper presented at the uh, past Canadian Geotechnical Conference in Regina. Uh, it gives you uh, you know, uh, an idea about, uh, about upscaling, how uh, parameters that you use for, uh, you know, calculation change with increasing, uh, you know, uh, size of the deposit. On the upper two plots, you have uh, data performed in a large strength consolidometer. Uh, you have, uh, you know, the average line and the upper and lower limit. And at the bottom, uh, you see those, uh, the same lines repeated, just without the test data. And that red and green line are actually uh, the results of back calculation. So in this case, uh, we found that uh, you know, uh, the compressibility is pretty similar, can be obtained by testing of, uh, in a laboratory scale, but uh, permeability is going to be underestimated. We have more in that Georgina paper. Uh, now, something about uh, thermal behavior, you can, you can uh, see the profiles in, in so-called uh, winter uh, season, and uh, on the right uh, it should be uh, summer or warm season. And uh, you can see what is, what is interesting, that if you uh, deposit material quickly and you have thick deposit, it will not freeze. Uh, if you don't uh, 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 have a drainage, proper drainage of the surface, uh, you're going to freeze supernatant water and you're going to create a kind of thermodynamic pump and an insulator at the same time at the surface and uh, you may actually lose the effect of freeze thaw the first uh, year uh, after the position. Uh, now about strength, uh, uh, those uh, dashed lines are a year after the position uh, solid lines uh, five years after, after the position, uh, the points uh, are, you know, vein uh, shear strength. And you can see that uh, we actually have pretty good increase in strength, a pretty high strength uh, five years after the position. Pay attention to, to five and ten uh, uh, kilopascals, uh, you know, boundaries, which because they are important for, you know, uh, the people. I mean, that, uh, that the operators, operators report to. Uh, this was uh, cell one. Now, uh, at uh, cell four, you have uh, a little bit different picture. So you will see that uh, years one and three uh, don't differ, actually, in strength. 
and uh, I can tell that you can't expect any, uh, you know, uh, any improvement because that material was normally consolidated and uh, covered with water all the time, so it will always have a layer at the top that is going to be very soft and a low strength. And now, if we uh, go to the conclusions, uh, well, I believe they logically come uh, out, you know, after this. We have some segregation, and that segregation is caused by, uh, you know, the density of slurry, and it's caused by, uh, you know, discharge conditions. So we have to do the best you can uh, to uh, avoid high shear deposition environment. Uh, what, is, what is a bit surprising is that consolidation uh, in, in those deep cells with the two different materials actually took the same time, about uh, a year, year and a half. Uh, again, I mean about operational consolidation parameters that have to be determined by back analysis. Uh, they are surprisingly good at a larger scale. Strength requirements were not met in the uh, cell for deposits simply because it was normally consolidated. You had to expose it to, to uh, you know, atmospheric to, to uh, climate, climate agents to uh, allow drying and, and freeze thaw to uh, increase strength in the upper meter or two. And uh, what should be done in, in uh, design is to uh, do the best possible to allow draining of you know, uh, of deposits and surfaces and, uh, you know, uh, to maximize effects of uh, freeze thaw and, and other, you know, uh, environmental agents. And in the end, uh, the group of authors would like to express uh, thanks to uh, the uh, team of uh, Shell people at, uh, you know, the uh, uh, NST client or, or TTF for, for their efforts, without which it would be impossible to uh, make this paper. Especially my personal thanks to uh, Jonathan Matthews and, and Nav Dudley who made this work a kind of uh, pleasure. Thank you.